the mail queue is down to maybe 55 packages right now after clearing out 15 of them on the last mailbag. So I'm continuing to try to get through opening a bunch on the same topic with these packages containing modules. And it looks like in this order here, I bought two Raspberry Pi Picos, one of the first ones I used to have with USB micro on it. Looks like a standard Pi Pico. And this other one has the addressable LED and a USB-C. So I think I was just making sure I have inventory of these. I have a couple of PCBs with the old Pi Pico on it. So I wanted to make sure there's more spares. Then there's these D1 Mini version 4. I just decided as well to get something with USB-C. And these also have these I2C headers on them. So there's power, ground, serial clock, and data on those side connectors. And I still work with these D1 Mini modules on projects. So if I'm restocking, I thought I might as well get the latest. And I've never had these yet. ESP-C2 modules. Again, USB-C, trying to get standardized on that. So these are ESP8684 modules with a single core and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth low energy. So maybe sometimes I could use some extra features above an ESP8266 type thing, but maybe I don't need a big dual core ESP32. This says connectors. These are card edge connectors for PCB insertion. Looks like I got 8 pin and 24 pin. So, of course, the idea for these, if you have a PCB with a card edge connector, you can dock it into one of these on a circuit board and have a design with a backplane and plug in modules, whether it's analog or digital stuff or even power supply modules to put power on a bus. You could have certain pins, for example, a small connector dedicated just for power delivery and then some data or analog on here. And depending what kind of card you populate, it can do different things. So I have some ideas for some sort of project that may use these, and I figured that should be enough pins, at least to get some experimenting going. Then there's some long-term ongoing projects I have. And I did that thing where I actually cut a plastic bag while opening the envelope. Here's a bunch of Zener diodes, 2.2 volt and 2 volt. So I got a whole bunch of these and now they're falling everywhere. Maybe that'll help. So I wanted a bunch of zeners around the 2 volt area for phone line related stuff for the audio path. And as a test I bought these five audio transformers one to one 600 ohm impedance. So they have four pins primary and secondary and that's also related to phone line things. So both of these are going to be used possibly in a revision of these phone line simulator projects. So I plug the phone in and the audio in and out path from this phone line simulator module goes through this 600 ohm one to one transformer. And by putting a couple of two volt zeners back to back across the audio path, helps minimize any spikes that can appear somehow in the system, keeping it down at reasonable audio voltage levels. And these surface mount transformers will replace those red through-hole ones. The main reason, I have a bunch of these I got from AliExpress, but they're not really common. If I'm looking on Mauser or DigiKey or something, it's hard to find something like this. There may be something footprint compatible 
I can't remember, but it's probably very expensive. All I know is trying to come up with a part number for this for a bill of materials has not been easy. So I can come up with a part number for the surface mount version. So if I'm going to scale the board down anyway in size because it's already getting large, I might as well go surface mount with everything and I'm starting some experimenting. So if these go well, I'll buy more and work toward a new PCB revision with possibly more features added as well. A couple of things I ordered long ago that have been sitting here as part of another long-term project. The phone line's been going on for years, but stepper motor related projects have also been going on for several years as I slowly get back into using those. I've got a collection of various accessories for motor stuff, so I've ordered some spare bearings and the shaft couplers, which I think are supposed to be transitioning between five and eight millimeters. I've got some of these previous things. I've kind of stacked them all together to keep them organized. Nuts and anti-backlash things. Pillow blocks with bearings in it. So these bearings will work well for this. The same as these pillow blocks so I can support a motor shaft and if the bearings run out I can maybe replace them or create some new apparatus altogether. And I can also use this coupler to transition from this shaft when I clamp down on it to a different kind if I need to. So just basically building up inventory of mechanical stuff. I have a whole collection of old steppers and DC and a few servos. So several ideas that I want to put to various experimenting. Eventually I may need most if not all of these bits and pieces. And of course, in order to run steppers, you need stepper driver modules. And I've got a bunch already from maybe three years ago, but restocking and experimenting with alternates. These are the famous 4988 and DRV8825. It looks like I only have four of the DRV and five of the 4988. I can't remember it so long ago. Did I only order four or am I missing one? Either way, it's way too long to open a dispute now, so I think there's others that sometimes get used or recommended, so I may buy others, but I know I've used both of these, so it doesn't hurt to have spares. I think I blew one of these up once. And speaking of motor testing, these are micro-stepping motor drivers that I thought would be useful for just some bench testing if I don't really want to set up a whole project just to run a stepper for something. And these seem well built. Feels like a rugged metal case. So using dip switches, we can set the micro steps up to 32. We can set a current limit, I guess it looks like. We can give it 9 to 42 volts DC to run the motors. I think they recommend a motor run voltage between 12 and 24. Then we have our stepper phase outputs and our clock pulse input to run the motor steps. We can change direction and we can enable or disable if we need. So if we want to move the motor and we don't want to generate back voltage, we would disable the driver, things like that. So that, I think I bought this three years ago, but then other projects happened. I want to get back into some stepper stuff, so it's about time I open these packages and get to it. So lots of ongoing projects being revisited. It's never too late to start working on stuff. As always, thanks to channel supporters for helping make all this possible.